All right, breaking news, everybody. Donald Trump's civil fraud trial just wrapped up in New York City with the former president still trying to stop it in its tracks. Um, Trump's legal team filing this request for two stays during day five of the trial. One to stop a judge's order that could gut his company and the other uh, to pause the trial. Attorney General Letitia James responding this morning saying the court should not upend an ongoing trial. For now, though, uh, that trial is going to remain ongoing and pick back up Tuesday when former Trump uh, CFO Alan Weisselberg is expected to testify. Today, ex-Trump organization controller Jeff McConney was back on the stand being grilled over valuations of Trump's properties. Uh, joining us now to talk more about this, MSNBC legal analyst Lisa Rubin, who has been inside that courtroom for us, along with Barbara McQuaid, a former U.S. attorney, University of Michigan law professor, um, and, and an MSNBC legal analyst. Uh, Lisa, pick up for us what you saw inside that courtroom, some of the developments, the major developments um, today. Well, Yasmin, the hubbub outside the courthouse has largely toned down without former President Trump here, but inside, it ratcheted up to a rather fiery level at the end of the direct examination of Jeff McConney. That's because Andrew Amer of the Attorney General's office was taking him through some of the most egregious examples of exaggerated valuations, whether it came to telling people in his statements of financial condition that he wasn't incorporating, for example, the value of the Trump brand, but actually a signing 30% or 50% brand premiums to his golf courses or treating Mar-a-Lago as if it could be sold as an individual residence when there is in fact a deed on it saying it can only be used as a club. He got McConney to admit that the values of those properties were set in all sorts of inappropriate and deceptive ways. But really the fireworks were left for the end when McConney was forced to admit that not only did he engage in much of the conduct that the Attorney General's office has alleged here, but he also assisted former Trump CFO Alan Weisselberg, who as you noted is expected on the stand Tuesday morning in the tax fraud for which he was convicted after pleading guilty to 15 felony counts last year. McConney said that he not only assisted Weisselberg in the fraud, that he knew it was illegal, and most importantly, that he did it because Weisselberg was his boss and he feared for his job. Yasmin, it was quite an explosive day to end the trial day. We know McConney wow. will be cross-examined by the Trump side, and Tuesday morning, we'll begin with Alan Weisselberg, as you noted.